This is the Pedigo City Commuter, and it's 2015 right now. I'm looking at one of their newer, more refined versions, and this really cool sort of iridescent paint job you can see in the sun. It's just, just fun. These guys are known for having a wide selection of color choices on the frames, and now they've got a wide selection of frames to choose from as well. So I'm looking at kind of the large size, like high step triangle frame here. Um, traditionally kind of like the guy's version of uh, the city commuter and they also now make sort of a step through it's kind of got like a lower cut triangle that that meets down there uh, near the seat tube a little bit lower it's gonna be easier to stand over and then they've got two versions of uh, kind of a like a mini city commuter that it's instead of having these larger size wheels the wheels are a little bit smaller and that kind of brings the whole frame down and the frames a little bit tighter so it's gonna be easier to manage for someone who's just you know more petite uh, and that's great you know the idea is like anyone can get together and ride one of these around this one's of course geared for city type conditions and maybe commuting i had one actually a long time ago and i used it to commute to and from work and it and it was great you know pedigo has a good warranty got a bunch of great dealers and they use these for rentals at a lot of places so they've uh of course they've been able to withstand some abuse and and you know pretty proven platform so i mentioned the wheels a second ago We've got the Schwab Fat Franks on here with this nice reflective sidewall, which is great for safety. Of course, we've also got pedal reflectors and front and rear lights built right in, powered off the battery pack. So you don't have to worry about, you know, putting double A's or anything and having them go out separately. Everything is powered off that main battery pack. These tires here, they've got kind of like a, a protective layer in them, so they shouldn't get flats as easily. And, and they're 28 by two inches. So two inches, it's a little bit fatter than a traditional city bike or a road bike. That's gonna give you some cushion, because as you can see, there really isn't, uh, there isn't like a suspension element built into the wheel set on this bike, but there is this nice oversized cushy saddle, sort of these rubber bumpers, and there's even a seat post suspension. I think the spokes on this are like 12 gauge, a little bit sturdier. Everything about these bikes is designed to be just kind of more rugged. And you can see that in the way that the battery pack is mounted to the frame here with this reinforced rack so here's this tubing it's connected in two places on the seat stays and then down here near the rear dropout and then of course it goes up here and surrounds the battery and just protects it like if this falls down or if someone bumps into it and that's awesome it's even got a little spring latch here for papers or whatever but if you've got one of those clip-on panniers that might not work because the gauging here is just it's thicker so keep that in mind. I, I've used uh, the Basil panniers successfully. They're just fabric ones that kind of like lay over it and it hides the battery really well. And the motor is so small that it just blends into the frame too, especially behind these 180 millimeter mechanical disc brakes. Like everything just blends in and you've pretty much got everything you need, you know, with these fenders, got mud flaps. They're really like full length, especially the front one. Like you don't get wet, which is awesome. And on the other side, there's even like a kind of a, chain protector and it's pretty well mounted here but if you step on it just be careful you can kind of bend it out of place a little bit um, this one's sort of a demo model and it's still doing great it's looking great and a lot of fun to ride plenty of power i love that they've got sort of bottle cage mounts right here on the down tube you can use that for like a mini pump or for like a lock or just a water bottle which is perfect we already talked about adding a bag back there i love that one of the other sort of like I don't know, um, user experience features they've got here going is this nice, like, easy adjust stem, okay? So you can change the angle. And if you bring it up, you know, it brings the handles back towards you. And then you, you've kind of got this, like, heads up point of view. You're scanning the city for cars and stuff and people, which is awesome. So to, to operate this, you, like, push up on that black piece and, you know, just that easy. And now I can totally, like, change, change the bars. I can swivel this forward or backward. I'm going to try to keep it pretty close to what it was because it was all set up for me so that's cool awesome like kind of oversized rubber coated brake levers from tektro with an integrated bell love that and they do have the, the motor inhibitor which is which is awesome because this is a pedal assist bike and it uses cadence sensors so there's like a you see that plastic disc right there with all these magnets on it there are 12 magnets and they pass a little sensor and that's what tells the motor to start and stop in pedal assist mode okay well, the thing is, the magnets, you know, there's sort of a, a delay between when the magnets go by. And so there's, the, you know, if you really need to stop, 
you want to hit these brake levers, you don't want the motor fighting you. And they do an excellent job of just immediately killing the motor. So I love that. And, uh, you know, again, 180 millimeter mechanical disc brakes. They've even got these like little red sort of twisters here. So you can adjust this manually by hand, um, or you can just use sort of a little hex wrench and um, service it yourself a little bit easier than if these were hydraulic. And in my experience, you know, they, they stop really well and they don't require too much extra effort to operate. So I talked about the saddle being really comfortable. I also love the grips. They're, they're sort of this padded stitch design. Um, they sort of mate really well to this twist throttle and everything looks pretty clean up here in the cockpit. Uh, oversized shifter, SIS index from Shimano. You know, you kind of like push up like that or click down to, to operate that. Um, and then it sort of actuates this Shimano Acera derailleur in the back with seven speeds. So, you know, seven speeds is enough. And um, Acera is like not the bottom of the line, but it's a kind of middle of the middle run, you know, it gets the job done for around town. And I like that they even, uh, you know, I mentioned the, the tires being a little bit more rugged before and not succumbing to flats, hopefully as frequently, because it is, you know, it's a lot of work. You got to unscrew the wheel and take it off and everything they've pre-slimed the tubes so if you do get a flat hopefully you can pump it up a little bit and then it kind of self seals but you know of course sometimes you have to take it off and they do have like a disconnect point here that the shop can work with for you if it, especially if you get it at a patago dealer they're gonna service it really well and they've got you know an awesome warranty on these bikes and one of my favorite parts is that the the battery is actually protected really well so before i get there this is a 500 watt geared rear hub motor so being geared can be a little bit smaller. It's got like three planetary gears moving around a little bit louder sometimes, but it just blends in really well, especially being silver like this. It's lightweight, it's zippy, it freewheels. So when you're coasting, it's not like dragging you down or anything. It's, it's a good choice for a bike like this. And the battery comes in like four different options. At the very lowest level, you've got 36 volt, 10 amp hour. Okay, and that, that bike, in any of the different sizes that we talked about high step low step 24 20 i'm sorry 26 inch wheels versus these 28s you know any of the four different models you've got four different battery choices and the lowest end um i think that one's like 24.95 and then if you upgrade to a 36 volt 15 amp hour that's going to get you more range basically it's just like more cells in there to go further but still at kind of the lower voltage 36 volt uh i think that one's like 27.95 and then if you want to step up to 48 volt, which is what I've got here, this is a 48 volt, 10 amp hour battery pack. So you really, you know, the higher voltage is going to be able to really take advantage of that 500 watt geared motor and, and zip you along and climb easier or move you around. If you're a heavier person, you're carrying luggage and stuff, it's, it's noticeable. And at about the 180 pound cutoff mark, you know, I weigh 135. If I was like 180 pounds, that's where I'd start to really say like, maybe I should go for the 48 volt version. But even if, you know, and, and that's because of the efficiency, like even if you had the 36 volt 15 amp hour, you're supposed to go further because there's 15 amp hours. Well, because the motor is going to be struggling and the voltage is lower, it doesn't actually work out so well that way. So it's best to upgrade to like the 48 volt 10 amp hour. In my experience and asking friends who are heavier, they're like, that's about the cutoff point. And then there's even a 48 volt uh, 15 amp hour. Okay, that's like the super deluxe. Okay, and so again, this is the 48 volt 10. That battery pack weighs eight pounds on its own. And this is a kind of a rear heavy design. You've got your hub motor in the back, you've got the big rack, and you've got the eight pound battery way up high in the back. That's, it's not perfect in terms of the battery placement, but it does give you the storage capacity and everything else about the bike is, is so like purpose built and really dialed in that I think it's just kind of one of the style things that, that that's how they're choosing to do it. And I love that with, with this sort of the upgraded battery pack, you don't have to leave the key in. Cause if you were having panniers, that would bump the, the key and it's just easy to forget and stuff. So I, I love that they kind of ma made some little improvements there. Got these big oversized pedals. I didn't want to miss those great traction. You don't have to do anything to, when you get this bike, it's just everything kind of works. It works really well. So talked about the motor, talked about the battery for the 48 volt packs, you know, they, they just end up costing more and, uh, up, up into that, like 3195 range for the highest end deluxe, everything and you get all the colors and stuff kind of for free. And, um, once the battery is clipped onto the bike and charged, there's like a little toggle switch down here. See that? So you toggle that to on. It's kind of a cool security thing. 
and you come up here and press the power button on the display. It lights up, it told me my wheel size, which is really cool, and then it gives me kind of different readouts. But before I get to that, one of the cool things is if you press the power button again, a backlight comes on the display, and the lights light up. And the headlights got like a nice little reflector built in. Same thing with the rear, so you've got great safety, and that's when you can start messing around with the different modes. But I did want to talk a little bit about like battery care real quick, because I think that's one thing, like if you get a bike like this and you know you ride it from time to time or whatever, if you live on the East Coast where it's cold, just you know, bring the battery inside. If you live in the desert where it's hot, you know, store the battery inside, keep it cool and dry. Okay, that's the best advice. And then try to keep it between 20 and 80% charged if you're storing it for a long time. And you can tell how full it is even when it's off the bike by pressing that voltage readout and you see the LED display right there. So they've done everything they could to try to help help you manage the battery and that's going to help it really last. So the warranty on that is one year like full coverage on the battery and they cover it up to three years but they sort of they sort of offer like um, a replacement plan in the second and third year. So they acknowledge like well if you've been using it a lot and stuff you've been getting value out of it you know they'll help you replace it for a little bit cheaper. So that's a cool plan you know it kind of benefits both parties really well and in my experience you know, I, when I would commute with this I would bring the charger with me to work and that worked out really well because I would just bring the battery up with me, lock the bike, charge it, come down at the end of the day, pop it on and I'm ready to go. So good, good stuff that way. Um, so back to the display. It's really cool the way it's set up and here I'm gonna turn it around so there's less glare. Yeah, it's really cool the way the display works. You got five levels of pedal assist and at zero that's throttle only mode. So you can just full power straight away with the throttle, which is cool. Then as you go up and pedal assist, you're gonna get more power just by pedaling and you're gonna potentially conserve your battery and not have to worry about your hands or anything, which I love. You've got your speed miles per hour is how it's set right now. Voltage, five different uh, like dots on the battery icon there. And then down here, if you press set, you've got sort of your trip distance, the time, and then the overall odometer. And there's a little icon here for the lights. Now there is a way to change a lot of this stuff in here. So you hold set for a second and it brings up all your different menus. So I can change sort of, right now it's set for 20 miles per hour. I can change the wheel size. So I just sort of arrow down or up so I can go to 26 inch wheels, 24 inch wheels. And that's just sort of the display sort of interprets that when it's telling you how fast you're going. And then on the fourth time I press set, now I can change from miles per hour to kilometers per hour for all of those international watchers. So that's how you change from MPH to KPH. You hold set for a few seconds and then you just navigate through all the different menus and do it there. So very cool. And I hold set for a couple seconds, it takes me back out. And uh, now I'm ready to ride. So I'm gonna start off just in throttle mode and show you what that looks like. Let you hear the motor real quick. And again, you can override pedal assist in any, any of those levels and you get full power with throttle. So that's cool. There we go. Very zippy. Pedigos are some of the, they, they just feel powerful, you know, and this is a 60 pound bike, so there's, some some weight to move around but when it goes it zips i'm going to do the pedal assist now um listen for you know kind of like watch and listen like when i pedal watch how long it takes for the motor to start and then when i stop see how long it takes for me to, for the motor to stop So you can see there's like a clear delay there from when I stopped pedaling and when the bike stopped powering me. Um, that's why those brake lever inhibitors are so important because now if I want to stop it immediately, it does just because I pulled those brakes. So, you know, good stuff. They've really, they've really thought this through and I actually like the cadence sensor like this even though it's maybe a little bit more delay and that's because I don't have to push hard with my legs. You know, I just move them and it automatically like, it senses that I'm pedaling 
and it helps me. So yeah, I think cadence sensors are great and they've, they've kind of used the best one I've seen here, which is the 12 magnet. So that's good stuff. I'm gonna go and maybe climb a hill and you know do some more ride tests with this thing. Okay, so I got the city commuter and I'm gonna be climbing like way up there. There's this cool little trail that kind of weaves through really beautiful park here and uh you know give you some idea of of how capable the motor is just even without pedaling it really it really gets you going so um let's see kick up that nice kickstand twist the throttle there we go yeah Here's the hill. Whoa. <laughs> Look at that. And I'm gonna stop halfway up. Here we are, we're getting, making some good progress and just uh, start from throttle here because this is steep and you know, again, I only weigh 135 pounds or something, but still very capable. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful, really, you know, it's easy to forget how difficult it can be to climb a big hill like that um, when, you know, when you're on an electric bike, because it's like no problem. And that's, it's a great feeling, definitely gets you out there more frequently and, you know, whether it's wind or hills or just the heat, it's kind of a nice thing. Um, the city commuter, as I mentioned before, has this big comfortable seat, but if you really are an active rider, you'll notice that it's, it doesn't have as long of kind of like a nose here and it's a little bit wider. So I've noticed that I could have some chafing or whatever. It just depends on your body type a little bit. And again, how frequently you're pedaling. So that's one area where you could, it could obviously switch out the saddles if you felt like you needed it, but then you lose some of the cushion. So, you know, this is the more active bike in their lineup it's designed to be a little bit a little bit less relaxed and you know it's it's the the handlebars are shorter you know and and the frame and even the wheels being a little bit larger diameter um, they're more efficient so yeah it's worth keeping in mind Now I'm gonna go back down that hill and uh, do a little brake test to, to kind of show those 180 millimeter mechanical brakes. Just do a, do a stop test. Again, about 60 pounds for this one. This is the, the have bigger frame and everything. So the other ones will be a little bit lighter than this. There we go. Pretty fast. Yeah. Not bad. <laughs> I got the job done. Not bad. Ooh. Well, there we go. <laughs> that is the Pedigo City Commuter. For the full write up on this with pictures and specs and more information, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com.